fire. That was an accidental fire because so far as I know, the FBI hasn't cracked down on the Ferguson rioters or those who burnt Baltimore to the ground. Where's the FBI on that? They're running after two ranchers who started a backfire to stop a fire that burned some government land and they're putting them in jail. Where is the oppressive federal government on the thugs who burned the cities of Ferguson, Missouri and Baltimore, Maryland? You wonder why there's anger? There'd be plenty of anger if you saw what was really going on. Um, do you still... Well, this is... I don't know. Nah. Eh. These other questions I'm not going to read. You know, sometimes you prepare questions hours before a show, and then you're in the, the thick of it, and they don't resonate. So those are good questions, and I invite you to join the program by calling 855-407-282. Here are some other headlines. Islam versus free speech. Twitter surrenders. Investors.com says Obama floods the U.S. job market with foreign competition to lower wages. Jennifer Harper of the Washington Times, an all-around fabulous journalist, says Hillary Clinton vows to investigate UFOs in Area 51 and alien visitors. She's really in touch. She is so in touch. Robert, do we have dear old Hillary talking about aliens and UFOs? Why doesn't she investigate the aliens from Iraq and the aliens from Syria instead of the aliens from Mars? I'll be right back. She understands what it takes to keep our country as safe as possible, to stop big bad things from happening and make as many good things happen as possible. When she was Secretary of State, she negotiated those sanctions on Iran and unbelievably got Russia and China to sign off on them. I didn't think she could do that. The only thing that has survived the estrangement of the United States and Russia from our attempt to do better is something called the New START Treaty, negotiated by Hillary's State Department which makes us much safer from the prospect of an accidental or intentional nuclear exchange. In a dangerous world, I think that's a pretty good deal. He doesn't talk about the fact that she caused the refugee crisis that is swamping Europe and threatens to destroy Europe with her Arab Spring, of course, because the people are stupid. I'm sorry to say the people are dumb. They don't know that it was Hillary Clinton who... I wouldn't say instigated, but enacted the Arab Spring program. It was George Soros, the most, I don't know, have words for him. If it was me, I'd have Interpol searching for him. George Soros has caused more damage on this globe than any single man in our lifetime. He is almost a Dr. Silvana from the old Superman comics. The evil genius who does everything he can to wreck the very societies that made us for and that allowed them to make his fortune. But let's go on a lighter note. Okay, it's Monday. It's a long week, a long month, and a long year ahead of us. The clown of the uh, campaign is Bernie Sanders. I would rather talk about Colonel Sanders. At least he provides a useful product from the grave than uh, that. I mean, chicken is better than what this guy provides. So here is a guy who is so unqualified for the presidency that only... People in Vermont could make him a senator. Listen to clip four. You know, we have enormous uh, problems facing this country, and I think we got more things to worry about uh, than Bill Clinton's uh, uh, sexual life. Uh, I think, w interestingly enough, maybe Donald Trump might want to focus attention uh, on climate change and understand mm. uh, that climate change is not a hoax as he believes that it is. No, he's a hoax. That is Bernie Sanders is a hoax. So what would he know what a hoax is? If you're a hoax yourself, how can you know what a hoax is? Why are liberals obsessed with climate change? What is this obsession? What is this obsession? Most of them are polluters. I don't know. I, I, I have a theory on it. I know that a guy like him is a red diaper doper baby, admittedly. Red diaper baby from birth, commie parents, uh, pot added to the red diaper pot creates insanity. That, but that's an old story. I mean, there's plenty of red diaper doper babies that are not this crazy. I don't know. It could be the seltzer. And I'm, I'm very serious about it. No one has looked into this. Many of you don't know what seltzer is, but it was a very important beverage amongst Bernie Sanders' uh, community in his youth. There were seltzer men and seltzer bottles on every table in his youth. And the seltzer men delivered cases of uh, seltzer, which was carbonated water in these bottles that everyone was afraid 
was going to explode. They were like pressure cookers. Every household that ever had one, it was only a, a ticking time bomb sitting on the on a dinner table waiting to blow up and kill everyone at the table. They were like little hand grenades, but you pressed the, a lever and the water came out, right? And I'm not joking when I say to you they should look into what effect drinking so much carbonated water had on the minds of men like Bernie Sanders. Would you? Th and they're obsessed with carbon dioxide. This is why I've come to this, uh, not conclusion, but this, this suggestion that their obsession with climate change and and carbon dioxide, which is by the wrong, the wrong gas to focus on with regard to global warming anyway, even if the atmosphere is heating up, it, it, the carbon dioxide appears not, it's there as a result of the heating up. Not It doesn't cause it. Let me put it to you that way. But nevertheless, they're obsessed with carbon dioxide because of the seltzer. All those tiny bubbles have to go somewhere. So think of the young Bernie Sanders guzzling glass after glass of seltzer water. Where did all that carbon dioxide go? I would think some of those bubbles may have gone to his brain. And I believe that that could explain, A, the obsession with carbon dioxide, the wrong metric, and B, the false, the false conclusions that they come to, such as the fact that uh, not Islamic terrorism, but a slight cooling or heating of the earth is the world's most important problems. Well, Bill hit the stage today for Hillary, again undermining her. As he spoke, women on the stage were seen scowling, grimacing, and looking anywhere but him. Once again, Bill Clinton is out to sabotage his wife. And I hope to God he succeeds. For the first time in his life, I wish him the greatest success. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7287. I've just received back uh, a report from uh, Attorney General Lynch. <laughs> uh, director called me as well as uh, Deputy Director oh, Randy, yes. about some Party of the General ideas Lynch. and initiatives that uh, oh. they think can make a difference. And oh, huh. uh, the good news is, is that these are not only uh, recommendations that are well within uh, my legal authority uh, and the executive heck branch, it is. Uh, but You're a criminal. Uh, you have no legal authority that, to do these things. Uh, you know that. American people, including gun owners. Uh, Nonsense. Liar. Liar. Every day. And the monster's back. You know, we had two weeks of a respite of the monster. We, we For two weeks, you can breathe easily. Now he's back like a vampire goes for the blood of the, of the nation again. I feel like a vampire just came back from Hawaii and he, su he stuck his fangs into the jugular again to take another sip of the blood that remains. That's rich. That's a good one. It's like, doesn't he sound vampire-like? This guy won't stop. He has achieved so much that the far left has dreamed of for so long. You would think that he could rest on his laurels. You would think he could slow down. You would think he would let the rest of America breathe easily, but he will not. This is the mark of a madman. I've tried to tell you that I think he's crazy. By all definition, he's a psychopath. Anyone with this obsession for power and control, to this extent now, and this animus towards the largest percentage of the population is by definition a psychopath or at least a sociopath and i don't know the difference by the way between either what's the difference between a sociopath like barry obama and, and a psychopath can you tell me is there a doctor in the house so we have a big fight on our hands this year and uh coupled with the declining economy i don't know if this is going to continue but wall street opened with a sharp dive today after a uh, collapse in China on the opening day of 2016. And, uh, you know, we'll have to see if this means a downturn and if uh, real estate's going to follow. Let's face it, real estate is tied to the market, and the boom, boom, go, go days may be over for a while. I mean, how long can this go on with the Dow up around, you know, 17, uh, 17, 8, 17, 6? How, how high can it go? Dow plummeted more than 400 points on Monday, slipping past the 17,000 level for the first time since October. It just uh, days after Wall Street experienced the worst year end since 2008. That's all. 855. Don't call on the economy. What can we say about it? I don't know. I don't know what's coming tomorrow. Do you? So if you care to comment on any of the great topics I've raised us thus far on this first show of the year 2016, the phone number is 855-407-282. So we have him back again, the vampire, and he's going after the guns now. And uh, he has to be stopped. It's that simple. 
he must be stopped at all costs. Now, in uh, in defense of the NRA, which I don't like, I, I don't happen to like Wayne, Wayne, Wayne LaPierre for personal reasons. I'll be very honest with you. I think that these are power-mad people, all of them. But I support the NRA 100% in their attempts to stop the maniac. Be Did you find the uh, the clip from Kagan that I asked for about uh, 30 minutes ago, Robert? You do? Okay, I want to remind you. I'll tell you why I don't like Wayne LaPierre. I never met him. I made a very large donation to the organization about five or eight years ago, and they sent me the most arrogant form letter you could ever imagine. And when I raised my anger at them, I said, how dare you res respond like this to this size donation? They said, well, if you'd like, we can possibly get Wayne LaPierre on your radio show. I never gave them another ten, ten cents. Like all organizations, they're only as good as the people that run them. The message is good. The work is good. But believe me, the people on the top of any of these organizations are no different than the president or the Republican Party. They're all one and the same. Make no mistake about that. Now we have for you something very important about guns and gun ownership. Many of you are very concerned about this because you understand what an oppressive government can do to a population that is unarmed. You know that a manipulative government like this, the only reason they haven't come in with uh, tanks yet to kill the people in Oregon is because they're armed to the teeth. If those militiamen in Oregon had no weapons, and they have pretty, pretty, pretty heavy weapons with them, they're ex-veterans, a lot of them, and if this government saw them as sitting ducks, believe me, they'd roll over them with the armored personnel carriers, but they're not going to do it only because they're armed. This is an armed standoff going on in Oregon. And I'll tell you more about that, what this is. It's a disgrace that this federal government would do this to these guys. They put a father and son in jail for a fire they accidentally started on a federal land when it was a backfire that they had started to stop a bigger fire and some of the backfire spread into the federal land. I know the whole story. Trust me. I'm not just talking out of my ears. This very same oppressive fascisti government that did nothing to the thugs who burnt Ferguson, who looted in Ferguson. The thugs who burned Baltimore is going after these two white men. This is a racist administration to the core. From the top to the bottom, it selectively targets people that they hate. And they generally hate white, heterosexual, Christian males who believe in the Second Amendment. If I could be more specific, I would be. But I can't be. And so here we go. This is very important for you to hear. No one else in radio has had this. They'll all have it tomorrow. I remember the hearings when Elena Kagan, she's on the Supreme Court. I don't have to ridicule her any more than I already did. Probably a very nice person. But never, ever, ever was she uh, at the level of a Supreme Court justice. She had written nothing to distinguish herself in the, in the world of jurisprudence. She's known for nothing any more than the most brilliant Latina in history wrote anything of any importance whatsoever. But Obama picked them simply to be the stooges uh, that he likes along the lines of uh, the, the Attorney General. The Attorney General who threatened the First Amendment, if you remember last month. Remember that one? She was going to go after anyone who said something against anything against Islam. She was going to criminalize it. Do you remember that? These are the ca This is the kangaroo court now running America. This is a, a dictatorship as true, true as I'm sitting here. But Elena Kagan, who is a liberal, may be a true liberal, as opposed to a fanatic stooge. I don't know. So when she was grilled by the Republicans and she was being heard to see whether she could sit on the Supreme Court, which was a given anyway, given the fake Republican Party that it was then and now, she was asked what she b had to say about the Second Amendment. Let's hear it, Robert. Is there any doubt uh, after the court's decision in Heller and McDonald that the Second Amendment to the Constitution secures a fundamental right for an individual to own a firearm, use it for self-defense in their home? There is no doubt, Senator Leahy. That is binding precedent, entitled to all the respect uh, of binding precedent in, in, in any case. So that is settled law. It is settled law. Well, I hope she sticks to her guns, so to speak, in the coming days and months, because it is settled to her. And, of course, Leahy, who is a real crazy left-winger, asked this question of her to allay the suspicions of those on the conservative side who suspected that she'd go right after guns the minute she became a Supreme Court justice. But we'll have to see what happens this year as the maniac in the White House 
continues his power grabs. 